On this episode of Purposely Curious, we discuss the use of talk in our everyday makeup based on episode one of HBO Max's docuseries, Not So Pretty. We discuss the link between talk and the infamous asbestos and why it is a big deal to at least know this information so maybe we can make informed decisions when purchasing some of our products for ourselves or loved ones. So get nice and cozy as this episode starts now. Hello, Leonie. Hello, Mary. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you. Doing well. Just enjoying this week and trying to get through it, you know, like everybody else. Yeah. <laughs> How are you doing? Tough. How's everything? Has it been rough? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> How's everything with you? I'm I'm good. I'm good. Um, I kind of, you know, when you have like this moment in your life where you're like, I need to reset and get more like routine based. Um, as far as like my apartment, so I've been kind of like routine based this week. So I'm very proud of myself. Um, but other than that, my week has been great. Um, nothing major to report. <laughs> well, that's good. Yeah. Anything exciting coming up this weekend for you? Uh, well, good question. Um, not this weekend. I'm just trying to catch up with a lot of things that I've been putting off. So cause I've had construction in my place and it's been driving me crazy because mm. I haven't been able to leave and do things and just have to be here to answer questions. And, and this has been like noise and it's just, and there's construction dust everywhere. And mm. probably the reason why I'm still coughing <laughs> too, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm a little, I'm a little annoyed from all that and just trying to get past it, you know, trying to like take this weekend to like finally be done with it, clean everything, move on, you know? Mm hmm. But yeah, that's about it. I'm, I'm looking forward to the nice weather coming up. Yeah. So am I. Um, it's been, I mean, it's always nice weather here. Yeah. What are you complaining about? Yeah. <laughs> I was, like, I was like, you know, it's always been nice weather here. Obviously, when it gets too hot because I don't have AC in my yeah. place, it's annoying, but you just sleep naked, you know, in your undies. Um, yeah, and hot, hot for you is definitely, so, so it's this, definitely. So the listeners know, hot for Mary is 80 degrees because, you know, she's coastal and they're used to the cooler weather over there. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> or like for me, it's like 105. <laughs> yeah. Or higher, right? Sometimes. Yeah, it can get like 115 or so, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, But other than that, nothing new to report on this end. Looking forward to the weekend and the weather, of course. Yeah. Um, May's already looking kind of hectic and busy for me. Um, Like on the weekends, of course. So I'm excited for next month. I'll well, tell you that. That's good. That's good. You got things yeah. going on. You got your social calendar's full, huh? Not full, but it's like, 60 70 percent full that's yeah. pretty good <laughs> yeah I got, I got like nothing on there I'm like because i don't i don't like i don't you, you know. have me on there yeah you're like we're one, supposed to meet one day yes 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 one percent you're the only thing on my oh yeah and that was only because i was there. like dude we should like hang out <laughs> yeah because <laughs> i'm like the i'm like the uh the long lost dead brother hey uh i know we talk about you know once a week or so but we should i think we should hang out next year so I'm like, all right, Mary, that, pick oh a my month. God, pick a is month. that how I make you feel? <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's a yearly thing, right? So you were like, pick yearly. a month, and, he, and so I was basically, like, okay, what you're May. saying, we hang out <laughs> next month. I we don't hang out for the rest of the year. That's is pretty that much how that's gonna happen. It's <laughs> <laughs> pretty much gonna happen. Um, all right, all right. <laughs> no, I'm not. Of course, I'm not making. I'm just making fun of life in general. Not not you, not me. It's just you know, this whole fucking pandemic and it's like oh, everything shut down and shit another variant and people not caring and masks on masks off and i'm like that's cool i have, I have no plans anyways <laughs> you know mm -hmm. but no i'm actually looking forward to seeing you it's it's been a it's been a as people say it's been a minute yeah and uh that's no, cool it's, it's like honestly the only thing planned for me I and mean, I, I know i have podcast things to do and I have conventions and talks to do and all that but it's like i know that it's like you know you're like the one solid thing planned already so i'm like I'm like cool i get to keep that plan <laughs> yeah yeah 
Wow. Should be fun. I hope you add more stuff to the, your personal outings. Yeah. That's I, not podcast related. It's funny because I, I, I just don't. I just, like, my rule has always been like, hey, whoever, I mean, besides you and actually planning something, it, like, it's always been like, whoever, whoever get, calls me first gets me, you know? <laughs> like, I, I don't like, like, just like whatever. Like, it's Friday night. Cool. Oh, let's go tomorrow. All right. Let's go. Sunday, Saturday. Let's go. Like, and then it's weird. Like, I have nothing going on. And then all of a sudden, it's like I have four different people asking to do something with, you know? Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm, you know, I'm going to go check out the flowers or going hiking or whatever, you know? So, yeah. So I'm not a lot different from you. It's like first come, first serve with me. Um, so, like, I already have like all my Saturdays booked for me. Mm, nice. So, um, yeah, it's, I'm not any different. So, yeah. Um, but I did want to say that we, this would be our 91st episode. 91st. It's crazy. I know. So we're going to hit the big 100. Um, Yikes. Yeah. So if we stay on track, which, you know, I hope to, it would be sometime in June. Nice. Yeah. So who would have thought, Leone, you as being my first guest would be talking about potentially celebrating a 100th episode with me that's crazy huh Mm -hmm. yeah not that not that i've been here for 100 episodes no but i've been here a lot and um because you've been very gracious and very kind and i've always enjoyed my time with you so you know it's like this is this has been a great journey you know and 100 it's a it's you know it's a big milestone it's you know it's a big thing you know it's i know it's like a number to some people but it's like no 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 you don't understand much work mary puts into the show it's it's a lot you know so i think it's a wonderful thing to celebrate yeah so i'm looking forward to that so to hopefully keeping and staying on track yes to hit the 100 right otherwise it might be <laughs> september right yeah yeah <laughs> and i guys i know i go through my moments where i'll like put up an episode every week consistently for two months and then like have two months of like one every other week so it just really depends where i'm at mentally right and energy wise because it is a whole thing um but i'm hoping that in june we will hit our 100 so that's cool. i'm looking forward to that yeah. yeah and so this being our 91st episode i wanted to do it on an hbo max original uh docuseries um called not so pretty the ugly truth behind beauty it, there's four episodes and they range from 25 20 minutes to 40 minute episodes um, and they're very very informative um so i'm gonna kind of focus just on one episode um because there was so much information right but it's interesting leone being a lab guy will probably understand some of the stuff we're going to talk about and maybe you might have some input um definitely and so I was definitely appalled by the docuseries. I felt, I was so shocked, but not shocked that I felt we should do an episode on it. And so I will be kind of going over the information on episode one, which is on makeup. And this is, um, we'll have, this episode had like two, three, four people who were victims of, you know, what we're gonna discuss. And it's also backed up by scientists and lawyers and lawsuits and doctors, right? Right. Um, So I'm not sure if you were able to pick, look at any of the episodes. If you weren't, it's fine. I did. I watched all of them. You watched all of them, them, yeah. yeah. So I'm sure you're, you were probably like, holy shit, we're fucked. (laughs) (laughs) Well, funny, funny you mentioned that. I already, I already thought that 10 years ago and I'll tell you later why, but it's very eye opening because... Mm -hmm. You know, I know you're going to get into it in a very few seconds here, but all I've been hearing lately is vegan makeup, no animal testing, you know, and I'm thinking that's not even the issue. Like if, like if that's your biggest concern about vegan makeup and no animal testing and all that, like there's gotta be something more to that, you know? Mm -hmm. And sure enough, this, this show points out some very scary stuff about what's in your makeup what's what goes on in nail salons what goes on with your skin routine what goes on with your hair you know hair care products you know and that's just that's just four 
that's just four things they cover and I, and I i have two more personally that i kind of hope they cover you know but you know well i'm only going to be focusing on episode one mm-hmm. so whatever you think i should be covering and i don't um please feel free to bring up later oh yeah no problem <laughs> <laughs> So on episode one, they focus on our makeup. And as you guys know, um, makeup is essential for 90% of women in the world, right? Yeah. We, you know, now it's such a huge industry in that, you know, people have foundation, powder, blush. Um, what is that other thing? Contouring which is like 20 layers and shit. Yeah. Um, I probably do half of, or more than less than half of all of that. But the point right. is, you know, just, to, you know, it's, it's a huge industry. Right. Um, they, in the first episode of this uh, docu-series, they introduce us to Corin Otillo. Hope I'm pronouncing her name correctly. Um, who, like most of us, had an interest in makeup at a very young age as a child. So her mother used to buy her makeup and through the years she got really good at makeup and became, you know, she wanted to do that as a career, right? She was really good at, at makeup. And so we're also introduced to Christiana, um, who Christiana Warner, who's a mother to a cute little girl who would, you know, would notice that sometimes her makeup was missing. And then she would find her cute little daughter who you see in the documentary Mm -hmm playing with makeup right um and so christiana uh as opposed to miss um corinne is basically a paralegal and she coincidentally worked with uh cases that had to do with asbestos and so um she when she noticed that her daughter used to use her makeup she said you know what I love that my daughter's, you know, we're playing with makeup and she looks like she really likes it. It's like a creative side of her. I'm going to go to Claire's, which here in the United States is like a shop in the malls for preteen girls. They sell everything from hair, clips, jewelry, makeup, um, maybe some toys, right? We've all seen Claire's. Right. Um, and so she said, I'm going to go ahead and buy my daughter her own makeup palette, you know, so they do sell makeup for preteens, right? Because I started myself playing with makeup in early high school, maybe even middle school, you know, my mom kind of, hated it, but I, I was playing with it. I'm curious about that. Now, when you started with that, was it because peer pressure, because other girls at your high school were doing it? No. Cause you went no. to a private school, right? If I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And was makeup even allowed? Yeah. Oh, it was. Well, it was allowed, very faint, but I started doing it because I was obsessed with a lot of singers and like pop culture. Okay. So I was trying to emulate the people that I idolized. So that's why I did makeup. Mm, I see. It wasn't to follow anyone. I was never a follower, nor am I now. Right. <laughs> so I'll tell you that much. But yeah. I just wanted to play with makeup now if you look at pictures of me back then i looked horrendous i mean i didn't know what the hell i was doing oh, please. but it was the early 90s <laughs> i was trying <laughs> so you're gonna post Ms. pictures later right i mean i could i would have to look <laughs> i would have to look yeah um so miss christiana warner who i said the mo- the mom of the cute little girl she bought her daughter makeup uh like powdered eyeshadow right Mm -hmm. um at claire's um was a paralegal and so she was working on cases that had to do with asbestos and so if you guys um have heard of asbestos you might have heard of them on tv when there's like a lawyer company saying if you've been a victim of asbestos please call us we have a case you know i'm sure you guys have heard of it um so the point is that when I guess the daughter would pick up on the fact that her mom was working on cases like this. She asked her mom very innocently, like, do you think my makeup has asbestos? And the mom didn't think much of it. But then as time progressed, and I guess while she was working on these cases, was like, I wonder if my daughter's makeup from Claire's, which is deemed safe to sell to children, right? Right, right. Has asbestos. And again, she had a friend. Um 
who she sent it to and said his name was Steve, who worked at a lab that um, coincidentally, because of where she worked, I guess he, he it was probably from a lab they used. Um, she said, can you check and see if there's any asbestos in my daughter's Claire's makeup geared towards children, right? Yeah. The documentary then goes back to Corinne, who was kind of like the makeup artist that we talked about who used to use makeup as a child and then now works for Dior. She's doing makeup, you know, she's getting paid for it. She was 26 years old, was having severe abdominal pain and went to the hospital where they said she needed surgery as soon as possible. And they found that she had mesothelioma, which is a cancer caused by asbestos. Yeah. But she was 26 years old and asbestos is something that is supposedly in quotations, right? Very regulated now. Um, asbestos is not used much now, but you would see it everywhere. People would build a, a lot of the buildings, the older buildings from like the seventies before the seventies, I guess had yeah. asbestos in it. Right. People that worked in factories and you know, they were getting lung disease or lung cancer. Right. And which is mesothelioma and it's very terminal. Once you get diagnosed, life expectancy is not long right there's no treatment temporary treatment you can go on remission but chances are is that it will come back um and so she was like how why how right yeah. so this is just the documentary is kind of setting up the where these two big big characters kind of come in right um if you guys live in california and i don't know how other states are uh sometimes when you go to a building, you may see a sign because legally they're supposed to tell you, right, that entering this premises, you know, as a warning, you you entering this premises puts you at risk for cancer or reproductive uh, issues. Right. And it's probably because that building has asbestos in it. In California, you can go to a store and if, you know, you're buying cups or stuff like that, if there's a sign that says, you know, Chances are is you could get it like there's a carcinogen in here. It could be that it has asbestos and or other stuff. Right. But if you see it in a building in California, a sign when you go into a building, it's asbestos. And again, this is from long exposure, right? Do you have any, any, uh, experience with asbestos working in the lab yourself or no? No, not, not in lab work. Um, but I, but I've been in buildings, obviously that's had it. If you've been in like a lot of old parking garages, they used it, uh, as fire retardant on the walls, you know, like if, like if you go into a newer building today, like some fancy office building in Beverly Hills, like you'll notice the underground parking lot looks like concrete, looks clean, you know, but if you go into an older building, whether it's apartment, condo, whatever, you'll notice that they coat a lot of the walls and the pillars that hold up the structure with asbestos. You know, you could see it because it has that um, like popcorn texture to it, you know, with the, with the paint. And uh, so it's it's obviously still around. And, you know, everything doesn't last. Like, you know, things like plastics and rubbers, you know, they don't last. They break down, you know, with the elements, right? So when these things break down, they turn into powder, right? And then, you know, the wind blows. And then next thing you know, you're breathing it in. Maybe it's just a little bit here, a little bit there. You know, it, it accumulates over time, you know, and that's how people get, you know, you know affected by it. Um, I did have one friend who passed away in the early 2000s, actually no, late 90s, sorry, from asbestos. And he caught it from building recording studios. He used to build soundproof recording studios for like very famous artists like the Eagles, for example. He did, he did one of their studios and he caught asbestos from that environment, from soundproofing, you know, from working in that, you know. And he ultimately mm -hmm. passed away, you know, from that. Because like, as you said, it's not a treatable uh, type of cancer. It's very harsh, you know, it's very painful. Um, Very much. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going back to Miss Christiana, who had the cute little daughter with the Claire's makeup. Mm -hmm. She sent it to her friend, Sean Fritzgerald, who, you know, I get, I said, like I said, worked at a lab. He called her and said he found asbestos in the makeup she had bought for her. This is sold at Claire's, right? Yeah. Um, so she had a lot of guilt. And so because she was dealing as a paralegal with asbestos, related cases she was like shit i've been buying my daughter asbestos filled makeup thinking it's safe because it's sold 
right. at the stores. And we're in the 2000s now, right? Where yeah. everything is regulated as far as asbestos. And that's where the thing gets a little crazy and a little tricky and really a little bit horrifying. Um, so basically, um, to get into it, right? Most makeup is powder based, right? Yes. So the documentary takes a deeper look um, into the products we have all used at some point. And so it starts, though, with it kind of wants to give you a history. And so we I don't know if you've heard Johnson and Johnson's baby powder has had a lot of legal issues throughout yes. the years. So it ha I've only heard of it um, prior to this documentary. I knew Johnson and Johnson's baby powder was linked to ovarian cancer because I had seen um, ads by a law firm saying if you have ovarian cancer and used to use Johnson & Johnson's baby powder, you have a case. So that means that they found a link, right? Right. So that's all I, all I knew about it. Um, but basically, it turns out that this asbestos goes way back to Johnson & Johnson's with their baby powder. And so they talk, um, I mean, I guess what, you know, powder in general, baby powder or face powder mm -hmm. is made of talc, T-A-L-C. Right. And talc and asbestos grow together apparently. And it is known now that you cannot separate asbestos from talc. Right. So listen to that, guys and women, mostly women, talc and asbestos grow together and they cannot be separated. It is scientifically proven. Right. So you will always find asbestos fibers in talc, period. Now, going back to what we were talking about is that's where the makeup and baby powders and everything is talc based is talc still being sold well let me continue leone mm -hmm. <laughs> talc is in our eyeshadows blush face powders oh no right so talc we are putting talc in our faces in our eyes which has easy access to our dun 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 our nose which then we breathe in right. and we breathe it in into our lungs, right? So asbestos poisoning, right, mm -hmm. is from long exposure to asbestos, right? Right. So imagine being using baby powder for years and years and years. It's sold to us by Johnson & Johnson as is clean. This is to keep your baby happy, to keep clean. Doctors are selling it at this point in the beginning of the last century right? right it's safe use it and so over time and exposure they notice there's a lot of issues with long term so not only the cancer producing but the, you know we're exposing our fetuses we're exposing you know blah 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 and so you know there's issues with sperm count for the next generation or eggs you know that's we're not getting into that but we're going to get into the whole you know exposure that we still have and how shady the industry is right. right um okay so are you with me there yep okay so excuse me i'm i was uh i have a tickle in my throat really bad right now i'm trying not to <laughs> cough <laughs> let me drink some water excuse me guys excuse me let's play the jeopardy theme in the meantime Yes. So the documentary then cuts to Miss Corinne, right. who's our makeup artist, who's 26 years old, who has just been diagnosed with mesothelioma. She was like, how could I have been exposed to asbestos? Turns out her mother used to use Johnson and Johnson, you know, baby powder right. throughout her whole childhood and so on. And then she found out that talc potentially has asbestos in it, right? Yeah. So she's like, oh God, I apply makeup, powder, eyeshadow, 
four, five, six times a day. She's like obsessed with makeup, right? Yeah. So she's like, if this is true, could could that mean that my exposure level was higher? And that's why I have this crazy, you know, aggressive cancer at the age of 26. Right. So she decided I'm going to send my makeup that has the ingredient talc, T-A-L-C, right? To the lab because now she's learned by doing her research, right? Mm -hmm. That talc and asbestos cannot be separated scientifically. There's just no way, right? right? And so she realizes and looks at all these products, and these are fancy products, guys. She's using Dior, she's using expensive stuff that is considered healthy, right? And safe. And she finds that 25 of her products have talc as a um ingredient so right. she sends them in and 10 of them come back asbestos positive they have asbestos in them um and 10 of these products it's a lot of products 10 yeah yeah so in the 60s and 70s when scientists realized that asbestos was causing lung disease and cancer um they you know also noticed that it you know it was found in talc in baby powders, like we talked about the Johnson and Johnson, um, Johnson and Johnson, uh, basically in 1976, right. Um, said that they wanted to verify the absence of asbestos in their products. Right. Um, and so they told the FDA, you know, we see that this is a problem. We're a big, huge organization. Johnson and Johnson is huge, right? Yeah. Let us self-regulate and set the standard for asbestos and the FDA. So what I've learned is that the FDA is able to recommend you take stuff off the shelves, but they can't necessarily force you. They don't have the power and legal power to do that. Interesting. So yeah. And that stands even now. So Johnson and Johnson basically at the time, right? Sixties and seventies and said, let us self-regulate. We will set the standard for the entire industry. Right. Mm -hmm. So the goal was to remove asbestos um, from the talc. And so the way they made it, and, but remember what we talked about, scientists know now that you cannot remove asbestos from talc, right? Right. So what they did um, was that they would, they had like, like lots, right, of talc. What they would do is basically... Um, 20 tons of, of talc. That's a lot, right? That's a lot, yeah. They made it to where they would only get one teaspoon of that. And in that teaspoon, they would put it under a microscope, right? Mm -hmm. And see if there was asbestos in there. And if that teaspoon had no asbestos, you can then say that that lot, which was approximately 20 tons, was asbestos free. Right. 20 tons is a lot. So they got away with saying, if we, from this lot, take one teaspoon, picture your teaspoon, guys. If there's no asbestos in there, the whole 20 tons is asbestos free. And it goes straight to packaging. But here's the thing, and this is where you, the lab guy, will understand probably. Apparently, what Johnson & Johnson then did was they would look, when you grab this teaspoon, right, of talc, Right. You put it under a microscope. They picked one of the least sensitive microscopes that would not be able to catch asbestos. Right. Yeah. So they, at the time, now, the, now it's crazy. You know, the microscopes are crazy. You can zoom in a million times. I don't know, but I'm sure it's a lot crazier. But back then they already had a strategy of like, let's use the least sensitive microscope where it would be hard to catch asbestos. Yeah. It's impossible. It's uh, so you know, it's like, it's like to, to actually see the asbestos fibers, which look like they look like sharp, um, like needles almost, you know, like, you know, filaments to see those, you need at least like 8,000 X magnification, you know, and I think in that in, the, in those studies, they were only looking at no more than 400 or something. There were, it was a much lower, less powerful way to see it. And like you said, 
you're not going to see it. And if no. you can't see it, then you just report back and say, oh, it's asbestos free, you know, and that's bad science. Yeah, but they didn't care about that, right? Right. They just wanted to sell their product. Yeah. So they have been sued. Johnson & Johnson has been sued over the past few decades over mesothelioma, asbestos, and their baby powder, which is cancer causing. We know ovarian cancer. We know lung disease, which is mesothelioma, which is terminal. Right. And ovarian cancer also being a very aggressive, I guess, women would put powder down there in their vaginal area. Um, and I, I'm not sure if that was like an older practice, um, but they were being sued. So this law, law firm asked to basically subpoena all of their documentation because Johnson and Johnson said, no, our stuff is safe. Right? right. There's we've, because they set the standard, right. To self-regulate themselves and the FDA was okay with it. Their stuff is asbestos. Yeah. And remember, I told you guys, 20 tons of talc, which talc cannot be separated from asbestos, they would take one teaspoon of that lot, put it under a microphone, microphone, <laughs> put Hello, it under talc. a microscope <laughs> that was not very strong, and they w couldn't capture the asbestos, and they would say, ah, oh, this, oh, this teaspoon is asbestos free, so this 20 tons is asbestos free next right yeah basically what when the law firm asked and subpoenaed this uh paperwork they saw that everything in these memos basically johnson and johnson was for sure trying to hide and they knew they had asbestos in there right mm -hmm. not only that there was a scientist who in the documents suggested using an even lesser, stronger microscope because the one they were using was too sensitive. Right. God, that drove and me so, crazy. Yes. And so now this law firm is like, you got to be fucking kidding us. 30, 40 years ago, they knew this was cancer causing and this is the way they were covering it up. Yeah. And so it's like lawsuit, lawsuit after lawsuit, right? Yes, because, you know, to look at that stuff, you're looking at it at a whole different scale, you know, because with our eyes in our in our tangible world, when we pick up things, we, we measure in inches, right, or centimeters, right. Mm -hmm. But to measure asbestos, you're looking at the micron scale, so you're measuring in micrometers, and that's ten to the minus six, you know. So it's like, come on, you know, less sensitive than that? Are you kidding me? It's like, it's like you're you're just trying to do bad science to hide the results which obviously mean, you know, that there was a lot of asbestos and you're trying to say there's none, you know? Yeah. That drove me crazy. It, it is crazy. Yeah. And the thing is that a lot of us don't really think about that, right? Yeah. Not only that, it's scientifically proven that you cannot remove asbestos from talc. You can't. You can't. And talc is still being sold legally in all of our makeup stuff. The makeup industry is the least regulated industry. In it's like States. you know I, I thought about this 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 um this comparison try try to mix equal parts of salt and pepper on your on your like in a bowl right and then shake it so you have 50 50 right mm -hmm. and now try to separate the salt from the pepper okay and m remember you can actually see the grains of salt and the grains of pepper right? you can actually see them mm -hmm. that's what your eyes now separate them okay now imagine something that's 10,000 times much smaller than that. It's impossible to separate. Mm -hmm. Like as you were saying, you cannot separate asbestos from talc, you know? So you either, you know, sell it as is or you don't, you know? And of course, if you hide the results of the science of, of the, all the, uh, you know, microscope analysis that you know, it's like, oh, we don't see it. You know, it's like, because you're look, you're not looking at it with, with, you know, with the right measurement. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, tr it's like trying to measure. It's like trying to instead, instead of saying like how many tons of water are in this lake or you know whatever, like you would say, oh, how many teaspoons are in this lake? It's like that's the wrong measurement. You know, mm -hmm. you're not gonna yeah. measure four quadrillion teaspoons. You know, nobody wants to hear that number, and nobody's gonna do that. So, yeah, it, just to see these industry scientists 
And remember, they're not working alone. They're obviously being told to say that and to do that, you know, because as a scientist, you know better, you know? Oh, and, yeah. Like any college science nerd, what you know, would be able to tell you, like, this is not right, you know? So, yeah, yeah it's so heartbreaking to hear that, to see that. Yeah. And they also talk about, um, I don't know if it was in this episode or another episode, but you know, one of the medical directors of one of these organizations that talks about how the, they're like part of a lobbyist group of how safe these products are. He has like a record where he had been like his medical license had been like revoked for like money laundering, but yet he's the main medical director and right. he's the one making these speeches. So there are medical professionals out there, whether they're scientists or doctors that for the right amount of money, will say what you want them to say. Of course. Of course. Yeah. It's like your expert witness. You know, when you, when you see a murder trial and you have a scientist, you know, they're paid to be there to talk to science. That's going to be in your favor to help your, you know, your, your client get off, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's why both sides usually have different scientists and, you know, and hopefully the truth comes out. But yeah, this, this is so sad, man. It's, it made me so upset so watching this. Sad. Yeah. And can you imagine how depressed I am it, when I'm watching this and I'm a girl who's very basic. Now, when I say basic, I mean, I'm like, you know, I, I don't, I do like, you know, the primer, moisturized primer and then like a little foundation type stuff. But, you know, I have girlfriends that love makeup, you know, they'll right. add, you know, contouring powder on me. I do blush, you know, and it's all talk based. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. So going back to Miss Christiana, who's the mom of the little girl who she would buy Clark, uh, Claire's uh, makeup from, she reached out to Claire's again, because she also worked for a law firm and said, I took the sample of my daughter's makeup, which we bought at your store. And we found that there is asbestos in the products and they were like no our products are safe you know they just shut her down right frustrated she decided let's put out a press release and so i don't know if you guys remember a few years ago um or maybe even a decade ago claire's was in the media because of asbestos found in the products and it was because of miss christiana um but before they took it to claire's uh, what her friend Steve, the lab guy, said, he had a bunch of friends in different parts of the country and said, but can you go and buy a makeup product from Claire's and send it to me? And he tested every single one of them and every single one from different states had asbestos. So it wasn't like it was a bad, just one off makeup. He was like literally all these stores from different states. Right. Their products had it. Um, so obviously there was a lot of PR, negative PR, because she decided to take it to the media herself. Um, and that's where she realized that the FDA doesn't have the political power or the legal power to force companies to remove stuff. They will find them, they will recommend, but they cannot force them to take products off the the market and the thing is that a lot of these makeup companies right or skincare companies mm -hmm. are self-regulated meaning they just have to hire an independent reputable well, let's just say for the sake of legalities an independent right. lab that could be you know you could be running a lab where you're an independent lab but you're willing to take bribes right of course to say or to do the like Johnson and Johnson memos is they would do a teaspoon out of 20 tons and use the least sensitive microscope. Right. Money talks, right? That's crazy. It's so crazy. It's so crazy. Mm hmm. So as these Johnson and Johnson's baby powder, uh, and rumors of talc and cancer and mesothelioma and ovarian cancer started to, um, started to decline um johnson and johnson started to focus on hispanic and black communities and they started giving out their products because they were in the memo that the law firm got 
was that they, one of the strategies was, well, if we focus on these two cultures, right. Um, our sales could go up right. because white people were buying it less because they were afraid of talk. And that's in a memo. So they brought that up to the CEO in one of the court cases and he's acted like he's never seen that corporate memo. Wow. Yeah. God, that's so crazy. Yeah, totally. And in those documents, the law firm found out that in, you know how we talked about in the 60s and 70s when scientists started to notice that asbestos was calling, causing severe lung disease and um, mesothelioma, right? The cancer that's very aggressive. Right. Um, they noticed that around that time, uh, Johnson and Johnson did an independent study where they injected um, inmates of black descent um, with asbestos of from the talc that they were using in oh, their right. spine. Yeah. And so the lawyers were like, well, if you didn't think it was dangerous, why would you do that? Right. Um, there was, I guess in whatever contract the inmates signed when the, when they started to get sick and they wanted to sue Johnson and Johnson, they couldn't because statute of limitation based on whatever contract they had signed had passed. So not only did these prisoners get sick, they couldn't get any money, financial compensation. And it, they you were know, fucking guinea pigs. Yeah. And they weren't, they were forced. They weren't even like told, you know what? Interesting thing is when you look at this uh, experiment, along with the other things that they were experimented on back in the day, you know, with, with viruses and stuff like, you know, herpes and all that. And it, it, ultimately, that's the reason why today, over the last two years, you know, the, the, the black community is not trustworthy of the government to get vaccines, you know, because yeah. they actually have a history that their own people were subjected to these illegal experiments and a lot of them came down with stds and got sick and died or had lifelong problems or in this case the asbestos study and they got super sick and you know maybe some of them died you know or ended up with cancer it's like back in those days there were no rules for any of this you know they just did it you know and it, mm -hmm. and it was so wrong so wrong but obviously the scientists you know and the government they knew what they were doing you know because they're like well we have to test on a human and you know we can only test rats so much. We actually, it actually has to be a human at some point. It's like, well, why mm -hmm. not these guys? They're prisoners anyways, you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's a lot of big problems with that. And, that. and that's one of the main reasons why the the black community does not trust, you know, things like vaccines and medicines. And I don't blame them. I mean, no, I don't blame history, them at all. You know? Look at the history they mm -hmm. went through. It's horrible. It's horrific. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. And so in these documents, Johnson and Johnson did just that. And it's sad to find out that they couldn't even sue for money compensation after they were yeah. diagnosed. So lawsuits have been going on since the seventies Johnson and Johnson has fought, has figured out a way to self-regulate without really regulating themselves. So talk has been in all of our products and it continues to be in all of our products, but it wasn't only, it wasn't until 2020, that Johnson and Johnson, because of so many lawsuits, and they're losing these lawsuits, guys, pulled baby the baby powder from all American North American stores. You will not find Johnson and Johnson baby powder anymore. You might find knockoffs. It's interesting. But you will not. But they continue to sell uh this product, which has been proven to have asbestos in Africa. Asia and South America. Mm -hmm. They just don't sell it here. But, the, but I guess the, the whole point of this documentary focusing on Johnson and Johnson is to show you guys that talc has asbestos and that's literally in all of our powdered based makeup. If you guys go through your makeup and it says talc, there's asbestos in it because it cannot be separated. Right. Right. So there is no such thing as asbestos free talk, no matter how they sell it. But the way they regulate it is they can own, they, you know, again, thanks to Johnson and Johnson, if they just take one teaspoon of however that lot, which is usually 20 tons 
and they put it under a not very sensitive microscope, they're not going to find asbestos. Right. And that's good enough for them to say none of this has asbestos. Yeah. But if you had used that same teaspoon with the magnification that Leone was talking about in present times, they'll find asbestos. Yeah. But the standard was set by the industry. So the other thing that they say you should use is cornstarch um, based products instead of talc. That's proven to be safe, but right. cornstarch has a bad name or a bad sound to it. Nobody wants to use it. Yeah, it's like popcorn. And, <laughs> and even <laughs> then, when it was found that Johnson & Johnson baby powder had talc with asbestos, they started to sell cornstarch, but it, for some reason it just didn't catch on, so they dropped it. There are currently 40,000 cases about talc still pending in the court system. That's 40, crazy. 40,000 cases still pending. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. And it, it's crazy for me because, you know, um, I used to use powder for so many years. Like, I used to use CoverGirl. Like, I'm very basic when it comes to that. Right. And, you know, but I still use, like, eyeshadow, you know, and so... I started going through the labels and I was like, damn, they all have talc. Yeah. It's probably just everything really. Mm -hmm. Anything that has to be a fine powder is going to be talc. Yeah. Unless it's cornstarch, there's, it's talc. Right. And so, you know, that's one of the things that you just, for the makeup industry is not regulated. It's self-regulated. Um, so because, and then the documentary kind of ends with, you know, we talked about Johnson and Johnson pulling baby powder completely from the States and Canada, right? right? They, Claire's no longer sells any talk based products. So even though they said our stuff was safe and tested and reputable, right? we won't sell them because I think deep down they realize, well, you know, science is science now and you can't separate them and everybody knows it. Yeah. But they stand by the fact that their stuff was safe. That's crazy. Yeah. What do you think is going to happen though? I mean, like, I mean, this is just now starting to get out there, you know? Like, well, where, I like, don't, it's not just starting though. That's the thing. All well, these lawsuits go back to the 70s. Yeah, but not the lawsuits. So it's been out there. Not the lawsuits. I mean, educating the young influencers that are the ones that put this stuff on by the tons every day, you know, mm -hmm. like, well, wh like where are the, like what, where, where are the Kardashians? Why aren't they protesting against this? And you know what I'm saying? Like they're a part of the problem. And that, that's and that's exactly. another thing. That's another thing. So you and I are educating people right now. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> HBO max did this right. But, yeah who has HBO max? Not everybody does, right. you know, and it's, it's, you know, I, I went online and I kind of search, you know, there's certain beauty people I follow and it's only now just getting noticed. Um, a lot of times from the comments I saw people were like, Oh, I saw the trailer, but I fear, I feel like it's, you know, fear mongering. Now, yes, we understand everything we live in. Everything we breathe is cancer causing. But it depends on how much exposure you're getting to this, right? Right. So we have a 26-year-old makeup artist who would apply makeup three, four times a day. She has mesothelioma, a terminal diagnosis only caused by asbestos found in talc, which is in her makeup, right? Yeah. She's also suing. The education needs to go out there um and that and that kind of goes into you know we also talk about what's natural right naturally based makeup yeah. so now everyone the the makeup industry is like oh people are into makeup natural so we're gonna start selling it this way but if you look at the word talc if it's in there yeah other stuff might be natural but talc you're, still you're yeah. still putting asbestos Asbestos, you can argue that it's natural because it's made in nature. <laughs> of course, everything's natural. You everything can argue came, that, right? You know, everything came from the earth. Yeah, every so they it's but it's deadly. And you know, rubbing asbestos on your skin probably not going to do much. It's you know if you inhale it, you know if if you know which you probably are every single time you powder yourself, you know, any part of your body, it's just going to 
get into the air that you breathe in that room, that space. So no matter how careful, no matter what kind of filter you have, no matter what kind of fan you have, whatever, it's still going to get into that space you're in. And eventually you're going to inhale something, even if it's one particle. Because guess what? Next time you do it, you'll, you'll get another particle and then another and another. And they don't clear your lungs. They don't leave your body. No, it's a fiber that once you breathe it in, it finds stays. its home yeah. in your lung. Yep. Yeah. And over exposure and when you breathe, you know, it just accumulates and accumulates, which then turns into cancer. Right. Yeah. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. There's a lot of, again, there's three other episodes that kind of focus on how Leone said the nail polish. That's a whole nother issue. Yeah. There, I mean, um, that's hair products. Yep. That's a whole nother issue. Skincare. My, I love skincare. That's a whole nother issue. Yeah. But I mean, I could do one episode on each of those if you guys want me to. <laughs> this is just on episode one, yeah, which has to do with makeup and how the history of talc and asbestos and how it's now known that you cannot separate them. There's just no possible way. Right. And so, you know, the industry has figured out a way with the FDA's approval of self-regulating, which is to their benefit. And that's where lobbyists come in. Politi you know, we all know that it's all shady, right? Yeah. Political politicians are getting paid by lobbyists to swing their way, swing their way. They even showed video in this episode of lobbyists and doctors saying that nicotine is not addictive. <laughs> and we all know that's wrong right. now. <laughs> yeah. But it's a really good documentary. If you guys have the time to watch it, uh, it's on HBO Max. Um, but I would definitely, if you guys want us to run down the other three episodes, um, we definitely can. Um, but I'm shocked, basically not shocked, but shocked. Yeah. And I, you know, yeah, it was very eye opening for me and I'm very grateful that you turned me on to this. Um, because it wasn't, I mean, episode one is just makeup. I mean, wait till you see episode two about nails and the nail salon industry. And then episode three is even scarier because it's skin, skincare products you put on your skin every day. You know, the yes, anti-aging, really wrinkles, foundation, all that stuff you put on, you know. And the crazy yeah. stuff that it's linked, all the, all the diseases, that's crazy. You know, it's linked to that. And, you know, I'll just touch on a couple of things, things like liver disease and early miscarriages. And I'm like, huh, is, I mean, don't people have, don't women have miscarriage problems like one and two like 50 percent of the time of pregnancies pretty much if you're older than 25 years old or whatever you know i wonder why like was that always a problem or is it now more of a problem because of these chemicals and the products you use you know yeah um, and it's not just focused on women they no. do discuss one of the uh, they discuss one of the doctors in one of the episodes who was having trouble getting pregnant and they yeah. realized that it was her husband sperm had like no when he would ejaculate, had like Nothing. no sperm. So he went on a full on detox that took years and to finally have them get pregnant. Barely got but enough. Yes. And so they do go into how me, let's say I'm a mom and what I'm doing to myself now for beauty yep. is affecting my fetus. Right. Yeah. Oh, but yeah. we don't see that until 30 years later right. when the fetus is like, I'm having trouble getting the female or male. I'm having trouble having kids. And so what they're saying is that they they're linking what we put on our skins. Right. Right. Whether it's our shampoos or whether it's this to a lower count of fertility. Right. Um, and so they they have statistics. Um, but we're not going to get into all those other those three other episodes, but they're very short. Yeah. Leone, you wanted to talk certain things. Yes. Yeah. There was a couple of things I wanted uh, to, three things I want to bring up. The first one is I can't remember which one of these four episodes might've been towards the end. They talk about how the FDA has banned like a list of these episodes. I mean, I'm sorry, of chemicals, you know? Yes. And there's like maybe 11 or 12 that are banned here in the U S so you can't use if things are benzene or this or that, right? There's, they're specifically listed, but then they said in Europe, in the UK, Europe, there's over like 11,000 or something that are banned. Yeah. And I'm thinking, wait a minute, how come we only have 11 compared to their, their numbers way bigger. Like, what do they know that we don't, you know, yeah. like they're way more strict on that. Mm -hmm. And clearly Europeans 
men or women still look pretty damn fucking hot. So they're still using <laughs> products that are have you know that are not um, you know made of these harmful chemicals. You know, so mm-hmm. why aren't the why aren't we doing that here too? Yeah. Well, the U.S. You know? has a bad reputation of not caring about their citizens. Right. <laughs> I have seen where Europeans come to the States and have chicken or have something and they're like, oh, this tastes terrible. It tastes right. like chicken, or like rubber. Like, right. And a lot of people talk about all the shit that we put on our stuff. So it's yeah. definitely, we're known in the world as not having the healthiest yeah. of anything. And you know, another thing I want to bring up is when was the last time you, Mary, when was the last time you put on sunscreen? Every day. Mm. I, yeah. And I, I started thinking about that and I was like, hmm. What am I putting on my skin every I've day? I've been so suspicious of sunscreen forever. Oh, I don't put on yeah. I, I don't put on sunscreen. Like mm. I will risk I mean, okay, there's extreme cases where you know I I will, you know? But yeah. I'm rarely in those okay I'm I'm rarely in those scenarios, you know? Mm-hmm. So but if I'm going to, I will put it on. But I do not. On a regular basis, I do not. Even if I'm gonna be in the sun for a few hours, uh, whatever, I'm I, I will not. And if you look in the recent news recently, and this has been like this has happened maybe three or four times this past year. There's mm-hmm. been a news story that says Copper Tone has just recalled their sunscreen. Why? Because it contains benzene. I'm like, what the fuck? We're talking about a chemical that's a carcinogen causes cancer. Okay. So to make these creams and sunscreens and all that stuff. Yes. A lot of harmful chemicals have to be used, right? There's no other way to process them, right? But at the end of the process, they have to be removed. These chemicals have to be removed so that all you're left with is the safe sunscreen, right? Well, at some point, somebody cuts some corners, right? Because trace amounts of benzene, xylenes, and all that, these harmful aromatic organic compounds, carbon-based, that are found in, you know, that are you're used in gasoline byproducts, you know, in cars and all that. Even then, they're, they were banned. That stuff was being found in sunscreen. So the question is, are people getting sun ca- skin cancer from sunscreen or the sun? We'll never know. Yeah, right. That, that like that bothers me so much, you know, because there's been a lot of kids. Like I think skin cancer is one of the more common ones, right? Like one of the more, one of the top ones, I think, in terms of cancers, because a lot of people get it. And you know, my question is like, is somebody keeping track of this? Like, do these people? You know, do, are, they, are they being pulled by the doctors that say, hey, do you use sunscreen? How often? You know, um, and mind you, you know, when I go shopping for things like, you know, soaps and all that, I always buy name brand stuff. Always. Right. Yes, it's expensive. It costs two dollars more or whatever. Right. But I'm going to buy, you know, dial. I'm going to buy soft soap. I'm going to buy this, that I'm going to buy copper tone, you know, because it's a name brand because you think, OK, they're a name brand. It's going to be safe. It's not made in China. It's not made in Mexico. It's not going to have lead. It's not going to have, it's going to be safe. And then it turns out that they have trace amounts of dangerous chemicals, you know? So that to me is like, okay, why is this still happening? And mind you, this happened like three times over the last year. And most recently, like a week ago, it was on the news a week ago. And I'm like, really? (laughs) You know? So that's, that's a ticking time bomb waiting to explode. And the, and another thing I want to mention is CBD oils, you know? People take that stuff, you know, because, you know, they, you know, what, you know, treats, I don't know, a lot of things, right? Depression, anxiety, and digestive problems, stomach problems, mental problems, you know, it's like, you know, headaches, migraines. There's a lot of things people find uh, treatments in from taking CBD oil, you know, and Mm -hmm. now you can find in stores, you know, Mm -hmm. and CBD oil is not regulated by the FDA. So, Samples do not have to be tested for any harmful chemicals, you know, and I do know for a fact that C- to make the CBD oil harmful solvents like benzene and, and, you know, these harmful are used to extract the CBD oil, you know, and that, that's mm-hmm. common. That's in, in, in the world of organic chemistry synthesis. That's common. You use harmful stuff to make good stuff. But the thing is, you got to get rid of the bad stuff, you know, mm-hmm. so I keep thinking. A lot of people are juicing up with CBD, you know, or taking, you know, droplets under the tongue or, you know, orally, whatever, daily, you know, and it helps them. That's great. But if it's not even being regulated, 
you know, and they don't know my, my, like, let's say I have a brand, I make CBD oil and the other guy makes a brand and all this stuff comes from small companies, you know, small processing, you know, home, maybe small factories, you know, whatever. It's like, who's to say that there isn't harmful chemicals, trace amounts left over. And then now it's like, yeah, people orally ingesting this stuff, you know, that, yeah, they're, they're feeling better. Their depression's gone or their heartache. I mean, their muscle aches or whatever, you know, whatever is being treated is gone, but slowly over time they're being poisoned, you know? And Mm -hmm. that to me is like, okay, God, if, if makeup, if the FDA is involved and this, you know, then it's like, well, what about the stuff that's not, you know? Yeah. There's no, there's no chance in hell to keep that safe, you know? Yeah. So, and that's one of the things that the documentary brought up is that, you know, it might be a very small amount, but the more you use it, right? Yeah. It's over time, over exposure right. to these ingredients can cause you these issues, right? right? So, going back to the makeup artist, she said she not only grew up with Johnson and Johnson baby powder, right? Right. It was like a staple in her house, but she was putting makeup since she was a preteen, three, four, five times a day. Yeah. Like, you know, and so then at 26, she had this. But if you're putting makeup only when you go to weddings and that's once every six months or once a week, your exposure is going to be less. Right. But you're still being exposed, right? Right. right. So I think that's, you brought up the whole, I guess, the exposure thing. And that's what I was, I guess, trying to say right now is what, at least what they're noticing. Yeah. And so... Um, yeah. And, you know, and, and, the, and the very, very last thing I want to mention for this episode here is pigments, you know, like what makes, like, they, they don't talk about that in the, in the, in the, these episodes, they don't make, they don't talk about that, but it's a whole other problem, you know, that's, that goes along with it. Pigments, like what makes the color, right? Mm-hmm. What makes your luscious red, luscious black, you know, colors for lipstick and eyeshadow and this and this, right? So in makeup, a lot of them come from fruits you know a lot of the dyes are made from fruits blackberries and strawberries you know the color that you get the reds and the blacks and all that you know they mix it right but Mm -hmm. some of them come from minerals and iron oxides and you know those are from the earth Mm -hmm. you know and it's no different from my oil paints the acrylic paints or the watercolor paints that i paint with you know when i do little art pieces or whatever you know it's no different Mm -hmm. those are heavy metals you have things like cobalt blue that give you a certain type of blue shadow, you know, mm-hmm. cobalt's heavy metal, you know, it comes from the earth, but it's heavy. And, you know, in the art world, you're not supposed to finger paint with oil paintings. You're not supposed to touch it in your skin because it gets absorbed and the heavy metals, you know, can affect your nervous system, can affect your brain, you know? Yeah. And there, I mean, there's even a lot of artists that I know, a lot of artists that are young, but they're like, you know, they don't know any better, right? So th- these are the words they use. I, I can't paint anymore because I'm allergic. I'm allergic to the paint. And that those, that's their language. That's a, that's all they know how to say. And when I talk to them more, I'm like, no, it's not that you're allergic. It's that you're, you've been poisoned. You've been poisoned because you lock yourself in a room to paint, and you're breathing in the paint, the dust from the paint, or you're absorbing it from your skin. You know, and that's that's the painting world. But now those same pigments are in makeup. So you're actually rubbing that as blush, as eyeshadow, as foundation, right? So, you know, it's great if it all goes fruit, you know, and if it truly becomes like they say, you know, vegan makeup or whatever. But a lot of the stuff is not. A lot of the stuff comes from minerals and iron oxides, and those are heavy metals that come from Earth. So again, that's a whole different type of poisoning that affects your nervous system that, you know, will... You know, it can also give you cancers, you know, exactly, you know, so it's like, there's a big problem with all this, you know, and I don't know if the way the Europeans are addressing it, if it's a much safer word, like, I would love to know what the cancer rates are for makeup and stuff like that, you know, but yeah, it's hard. That's hard to, that's hard to say, right? Because yeah, just because a girl wears makeup doesn't mean that that's the cause. Cause maybe she, her job is doing something that involves, you know, something carcinogen, right? Yeah. And in one of the episodes uh, where this Vietnamese, you guys know that in the Vietnamese community, Mm -hmm. um, they 
nail shops is like huge thing. Right. Um, one of the daughters of one of the ladies who got cancer, breast cancer, um, said, can you look and see if it was all the chemicals that I was exposed to? Right. And she realized that there's no studies. There had been no studies prior to that. Yeah. And so I guarantee you there are just, there's a problem. No one's studying all these things, you know, whether it's exposure to our skincare. Cause trust me, I'm all about my skincare. And after watching this, I was doing my skincare and I was almost crying. Like <laughs> <laughs> this thing that I love so much is probably killing me. And it's, it's crazy to think. Let me, you know ask, you, I mean? let me ask you a really hard question here. Is it enough to make you stop? It, I haven't stopped. Will you? But I'm aware. I want to minimize what I do. If the steps, if that makes sense. Like, like, is there a possibility that all, like if this goes viral and it really shows that, Hey, there's a big problem. And until it gets figured out, like nobody's wearing makeup, you know, is it possible that women will go, women, men, they use makeup, you know, will they go all natural, you know, and not wear anything? Is it possible that we no, end up as a society? I don't think it is. Because, you know, you know, a lot of people rely on it for beauty, right? To cover up whatever, right? Um, skin imperfections or acne, mm -hmm. you know, whatever, right? And uh, and they look great. Mm -hmm. And But we're so used to that, right? We're so used to, used to vanity. We're so used to beauty, right? We always want to see the cover girl. We don't want to see her without makeup, you know? And it's it's not because... We hate that. No, it's just because we're so used to it. That's all. But wouldn't it be crazy if like it just it stopped for a while, you know? Yeah, it would be crazy. But I don't I don't think. Like is, is cancer, is, is disease, is all is it worth the risk? Well, I went on, t on TikTok <laughs> <laughs> and someone commented on one of the videos. I looked up what people were saying on TikTok. So someone said, I'm here for a good time not to worry about this someone else had said like we're dying of everything anyway so i'm still gonna live my life so a lot of people are taking that route right if right. it's not coffee it's not this it's not that so there's a lot of resistance right and but that one made me laugh like well i'm here for a good time not you know not to worry about what's killing me or not. right but here, here's the interesting thing though let's say that's a 20 year old saying that right and then now 20 years later they're in their 40s right or let's say they're 40, exactly. 40 is still young, right? There's girls mm -hmm. who are 40 that, hey, they're the life of the party. They're still young. There's nothing wrong with that. They they're, they still, some, a lot of them are having babies still in their 40s, you know? So, I mean, you, you it's one thing to be 20 and be like, I don't care, you know, YOLO, you know? But then you hit 40 and you're like, fuck, I should have stopped. I mean, I have severe problems now, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, I wonder, will there be regret at that age, you know? Oh, well, obviously there will probably be regret, but there will potentially be the next 20 year old who doesn't give a shit. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to read you some comments. Okay. Mm -hmm. Everything is bad. I can't with the earth. No more. Can't eat, do my makeup or anything. Someone else wrote, everything is bad for anyone. Air fresheners, candles, makeup, shampoo, conditioners food, milk. And then someone actually wrote, thank God I stopped wearing makeup during the pandemic. Then someone wrote, this is common sense. People thought makeup was just clean. Makeup is nothing but chemicals. Just look at how long ingredients are on the back. Yeah. Um, someone said they got the skin deep app after watching the first episode. Now they're scanning everything. Someone wrote, if there's talk, don't get it. Someone wrote, you know, I wonder about eyelash glue because I wear no makeup anymore, but just eyelashes. Yeah. So they're wondering if the glue is fucking them up. Yeah. Um, only and someone wrote only in the USA. Thank God I don't live there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> That's funny. Someone said I went and grabbed my powder and it says it has talc in it. I've been using it for years yeah and you, you know what in the uh sports world guys use gold gold bond you know women use gold bond athletes women men when men are the athletes use gold bond which is 
another powder, you know? Yeah. Someone just wrote, me just buying a new Sephora Micro Smooth powder. And someone said, Did the, does the ingredient say talk? And she wrote back, yeah, it's like the first of course. listed ingredient. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And some people are like, they only care about money and, you know, because we spend on them. We don't, we always, they don't care about our health, but we're sold that these are good and healthy. Yeah. Yeah. So there's mixed emotions um, and there is depression in a lot yep. of people saying, holy shit. There was and then a- someone just said, what about organic, vegan and toxic free companies? Like yeah. you were saying, good it luck. can't all be bad, right? And then they put a sad face like. They, they're pretty sure it's probably just as bad. <laughs> yeah, there's no difference. Yeah, so if you guys are interested in this, Leonie and I could then probably do an episode on the nail salon one. And then, you know, if we have more time, we can do one on the hair one, um, which is something also. I mean, it, it's in depth, but obviously we're not trying to be fear mongering. We're just trying to educate. Oh, no, I'm trying and to scare you. I'm a registered nurse who <laughs> deals with patients who have cancer yeah. and I have met patients who have mesothelioma and it's not a pretty death guys. No, it's not a pretty death. No. So I felt like we should do an episode and, and you working in the lab, seeing how shady this company Johnson and Johnson was Yeah. in the sense that they were like, let's use the least sensitive microscope. And they're self-regulating by setting their own standards in yeah. the 70s that every single company is still abiding by. Yeah. There, so. There's, you know, there's also another shocking quick, it's a quick, quick scene that really surprised me is there was a gentleman, former employee, okay, of a, a big farm, uh, a big perfume company. I don't, do you remember what name, what the name was? No. Because I don't want to, I don't want to misquote the wrong company, you know, but it was a big perfume company. And he said, this is how we take action. A, we do nothing until people jump on Facebook and start complaining about, you know, issues, right? Skin irritation or this or that, right? And then when the number gets high enough, then they start looking into it. Yeah. And it's the same with the auto industry. It's the same with auto. And I found that out. I'm not trying to minimize that, but I feel like that's just how the U S is set up. Yeah. I, I had my windshield at my, in my Volkswagen Beetle break and crack in the same fucking manner when it was really hot, dude. That's funny. And my car was like two years old and I took it in there. I Googled and people were having the exact same crack. Right. In the, it, it would crack from the middle, you know, where the visor is. Right. It would crack from there, go down, and then go sideways to the left, to the driver's side. Yep. It did it twice. The first time, I said, okay. The second time, the exact same crack, I said, there's something wrong. I Googled it, and there was hundreds of people complaining of the same thing. Yeah. And what Volkswagen told me, they tried to fight me on it, but I got all Karen-ish on them. Excuse my language. <laughs> nice. <laughs> But they basically said until there's a, a a certain amount of complaints, it's only when only then that they will do a recall. Yep. And so I know it's for every industry, and that's the sad part. Imagine if these are like deadly things. It's you so know, crazy. Whether it's cancer or accidents, right? Yeah. The brakes on this car give out. How many people had to have car accidents for them to do a recall? Right. Yeah crazy um but yeah anyways we didn't mean to be a debbie downer on this episode guys but i thought it would be very important just because i've seen mesothelioma patients up front and it's a terrible death it's painful yeah and it's sad and it's quick once it really starts taking over yeah and so this documentary is on hbo max if for those of you who do have hbo max I suggest you seeing it. Um, again, it's called Not So Pretty, and it's the ugly truth behind beauty. And it is narrated by Kiki Palmer. It's a really, really good documentary, and it backs up everything with lawsuits, scientific stuff. And before, I, I don't want, it made me question everything. And these are the two things that made me question. The way they found out that 
asbestos was killing people with a cancer that is incurable was that they were there there was a link so they started testing animals with it right yeah that's the way they were able to link it you know we live in a cruelty free you know everyone wants to buy cruelty free but that was the only way they would find out if things weren't were killing people right and now we don't have that yep so we we're, we're the ones finding out yeah at this point because we're the guinea pigs yeah. right the second thing these four episodes made me think about is covid we are putting so much shit on ours now chemical wise we're sanitizing like crazy people yep. you know i've never sanitized you san sanitizer as much as i do now right i started to be like what am i really doing my to myself long term Right. It makes you think we're not going to find out till decades later yeah. that all this hand sanitizing, you know, could be potentially harming us. Yeah. I mean, I know there've, there's already been things recalled, hand sanitizers oh, recalled yeah. already, <clears throat> and, but and, the long-term yeah. effects we don't know yet in right. post-COVID era. We're yeah. doing ourselves harm and we don't even know it yet. Yeah. You know, and what, one, of the, one of the great things about this documentary, Not So Pretty, HBO Max is that it's not political. Like it, you know, I usually don't care for these type of documentaries because they they're usually political. They're usually one sided, and they usually suffer from that whole Michael Moore problem. You know, Michael Moore. Remember the the nine eleven documentary. Remember that? Yeah, yeah. The Michael Moore problem is where he takes an interview and he cuts it. He doesn't t t show you the full every, everything that was said. So what he cuts it so that it sounds stupid racist you know and i hate that like i don't care if you're left or right or wrong or you know young old whatever like if you said something complete and it wasn't shown that way it was just cut to make you look dumb and all that like i, I can't get behind that like i have a hard time with that you know i'm like clearly he it was edited for his favor you know and that's mm -hmm. that's fine he has an audience the left the extreme left you know whatever that's great go spread spread your message but I can't get behind your documentary, you know? So I was mm -hmm. watching this documentary with those open eyes to see, is it skewed? Is it really, you know, going to just, you know, do this or that? And it's like, no, it was very thought out. It was very complete. And it showed just enough of how they cover up the science, you know, of the industry, you know, to say that, oh, products are safe, product is safe, product is safe, or hasn't been tested or whatever, you know? And just enough so that it gets on the on the shelves, you know, on the market so people can buy it, you know. And so it's like And I when felt, you guys see this, no one's gonna be shocked, right? It's right. almost like, yeah, I'm shocked, but I'm really not shocked. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> because we we see how you really we none of us could really trust anyone, no matter where we stand right. politically or scientifically or religiously. Right. Yeah. You can't trust anyone or anything yeah. at this point. Yeah. So, you know, like, you know, like you, like you said, it's only four episodes so far. I don't know if they're going to do more, but I, I really wish there was a sunscreen episode because that's, that's, that's still going on right now. And yeah, oh, you know, trust me, that's scary to me because I apply it every day. Yeah. <laughs> and you bring up a good point. And like I said, I started to think of, you know, well, now everyone's hand sanitizing, you know, we're, putting all these products to clean ourselves and like we don't really know chemically the long-term effects of right what we're supposed to be fixing or cleaning ourselves right now right yeah so and again when the biggest thing too is uh we just have to continue to self-educate nothing is i guess natural even if it says natural if it's there's chemicals in it so oh, yeah sometimes you're better off cleaning with lime and water you know yeah. but <laughs> yeah anyway well, I guess that's uh, the end of our depressing episode. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to say it's an educational, eye-opening episode. Yeah, yeah. Same for me. And you guys, uh, again, you can change your habits as far as, as makeup or if not, or you can be some of those who are like, you know, I don't care. Everything's going to kill me at this point. Right. I still haven't changed my skin skincare routine because there is an episode on skincare. Um, my candle is burning here. It's been burning for an hour, so I'm breathing in these fumes. Um, 
but I, I don't know that I can give up certain things and that's something that I have to self reflect. Right. Right. So I don't blame you guys if you guys don't change anything, but like Leone said, this is only educational and I am myself struggling with what to give up. Yeah. And, you know, I can only imagine someone who's a makeup enthusiast, you know, it's hard. You're giving up parts of yourself. It's, it's really hard. And of course, you know, until we get diagnosed with something, I don't know. It's a tough one. It is tough. Good question, Leone. And, I, yeah. and, I'm, and I'm just really wondering if we're all going to change or not, you know? Yeah, I don't think so. You know, um, or, or, or does, or does medicine and science prevail in terms of, you know, the super vitamins, you know, the ones that kill the cancers, you know, like, do we get to that point soon where none of this matters? You know? Yeah, it w I mean, it won't be science. It'll be holistic people. I don't know. That's a whole nother conversation. <laughs> but thank you, Leone, for joining us on another episode. My pleasure. Always a good time, Mary. Thank you for having me. Yes. And thank you, everyone, for listening to another episode of Purposely Curious. Bye. That was episode 91 of the Purposely Curious podcast. Make sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and on most podcast platforms. And follow us on social media at Purposely Curious on Instagram and at Purposely C Pod on Twitter. That's Purposely, the letter C, Pod. Until next time, you know what to do.